in today's video. Pretty amazing. Oh yes, 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 yes. Talk saying. <laughs> oh shit. Olympus has always been great with their lens design. Ever since their very first rolled out of its factory in 1936. And that very first lens was the legendary Zuiko 75mm 4.5. And over the years, they have produced many spectacular designs from camera lenses to optic equipments to medical instruments. Now in 2020, we have this, their latest and their very first super zoom tele the 100-400 f5 to 6.3 IS. Thank you for joining me. My name is Jimmy Chang. I'm a professional photographer, filmmaker, and an Olympus ambassador. So if you're new here, this channel is all about making you better in photography, filmmaking, and also do a little bit of gear review, just like today's video. Just a disclaimer, this video isn't sponsored by Olympus. So everything I'm going to say is completely personal. If you're an Olympus fan, very likely you have seen their latest roadmap, and that's why you get excited about today's video. So without further ado, Let's have a look at this beast here, the Olympus M Zuiko 100-400mm f5-6.3 to IS. Yeah, let's roll! Why should you be excited? Well, let's consider the zoom range first. This lens covers a range of focal lengths from 100mm all the way to 400mm, and that is huge not only for Micro Four Thirds, but also on other formats. For those who don't know exactly what that means, here's a table so you have an idea just on how much this range covers in your interested formats. In short, this lens can see things from distance, and I mean crazy far away stuff, and more on this later. First, let me clear one thing. This 100-400mm IS isn't a pro lens. If you want a pro version of this, you will have to wait a little longer. Despite not being labelled as a pro lens, it certainly builds like one. It's very well put together and has a metal chassis for strength and polycarbonate shell just to keep the weights down. Because at 1.12kg, without tripod collars, lens cap and hood, this lens is not light. The fitmanship is top notch too. Well, it's an Olympus lens after all, with absolutely no play or wobble that I can feel from any of the rings and switches while using the lens. And with typical Olympus fashion, the zoom and focusing rings are J-Lo buttery smooth. If you're considering buying a super zoom lens like this, very likely you're going to take it to the great outdoor. To give you peace of mind, Olympus has given us IPX1 weatherproofing so you don't have to worry about elements especially when you pair with the equally bulletproof Olympus OMD M1 Mark III and the M1X. I have always praised the Olympus optical quality, and once again, the 100-400mm IS impresses. Common to super zoom lenses however, including its direct micro four-third rivals, the optics are sharper at the short end and there is a tiny and gradual drop in sharpness as you zoom in but overall image quality is nothing shy of being awesome for this class of lenses. Sharpness and contrast are very even across the focal plane, which is very good for off-center composition. Chromatic aberration and vignettings are both very well controlled too. With 21 elements in 15 groups, this is a very complex lens. Distortion is kept to minimum through the entire zoom range and has 9 circular aperture blades for those bokeh lovers. For those who love numbers, this lens has a viewing angle of 12 degree at the short end and only 3.1 degree at the tele end, and that is crazy narrow. And what that means is that you will have to know your lens very well 
and know how it operates before you can maximize its capability. Variable aperture opens for maximum of f5 at 100mm and 6.3 at 400mm. Optimal image quality achieved between f5 and f8 before diffraction starting to creep in from f11 onward. Aside from image quality, handling is particularly important for this type of super zoom lens due to its sheer size and weight. I would recommend using this 100 to 400 mm IS lens on a larger OMD body, such as the uh, OMD EM1 Mark III, or better still, the EM1X, or any of the EM1 series with vertical grip attached. This will even out the weight distribution when you're doing handheld shooting. On tripod, it matters less, but a word of warning please use the provided tripod collar. If you let the camera body take the weight of the lens, you will risk bending or even cracking the camera's bottom plate. The tripod collar is very strong and stable, with an extra brownie point for being Aka Swiss compatible, so you don't even need to use a mounting plate, providing your tripod head accepts Aka Swiss connection, such as this one here, the new airhead view on the latest Ray Carbon Travel tripod by 3 Lega thing that I just reviewed. Like many lenses in this class, the 100-400 has inbuilt IS, which will give you up to 3 stops of compensation for both yaw and pitch. But when you combine it with the latest OMD EM1 Mark III and the EM1X, you can get up to 7.5 stops of 5 axis stabilization, which is absolutely crazy, but very useful when you're considering the maximum reach of this lens. One thing to mention is that the IS button is for the lens operation only. When you turn off the IS on the lens, your camera IBIS is still working. So, if you want no image stabilization at all, you will have to turn off the IS on the lens and the camera body independently. The MSC compatible AF is silent and quick, allowing you to track subjects effectively. But there is no famous manual clutch from the Pro system, but it does have a dedicated AF MF switch, allowing you to switch manual focus instantly without having to go through the camera. The lens also extends and retracts when zooming, so it has a lock button to prevent any accidental erection, and you certainly don't want to do that when you're walking around. Now comes to the killer features of the 100-400mm IS lens, because there is nothing else on the market can do this natively on the Micro Four Third platform, is to use the teleconverters. Yes, you heard that right, you can use Olympus teleconverters, the 1.4x MC14 just like the one right here, or the 2x converter, the MC20, and that will give you a crazy, jaw-dropping, mind-blowing 800mm or 1600mm in full-frame term. And that is long enough to see Neil Armstrong's footprint on the moon. Well, almost, but you get the idea. It's crazy. And this is a first, natively, optically, on a Micro Four Third platform. One last trick of this 100 to 400 mm IS lens is its close focusing capability. It can shoot as close as 1.3 meter throughout the entire focal length, and that means you can get some details with this lens. And I can tell you that is actually pretty good too. And to aid focusing speed and to avoid focus hunting, Olympus has given us three stage focus limiter as well. When using teleconverters, you will lose light. And with the MC20 at 800mm, your maximum aperture will drop from 6.3 to f13. For my test with the MC14, I don't see AF speed drops or losing accuracy, but something that you will have to bear that in mind, as you may have to reserve this combination for bright days or you have to push the ISO higher to freeze frames if you need. Then, of course, until the Monster 150-400mm f4.5 Pro IS arrives, but it will be bigger, heavier, and more expensive. So, for the price and performance of the 100-400mm to IS, it's a very easy recommendation, especially for those who want to capture a large focal length and to capture things on the moon. Thanks once again for watching this video and I hope you enjoyed this review. You know what to do now, thumb if you liked the video and sub if you loved it. Holy crap. Yes, 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 yes. Oh yeah. Come on, come on. Wula wula. Ace. 
it's pretty crazy. You can get really, really close to everything. Wow, I like it.